What's up everybody? Peter Holmes here, athlete at Enjoy Winter, and today we're going to talk about poles. Every skier that participates in both skate and plastic skiing will likely have two pair of poles, a longer pair for skate skiing, and a shorter pair for classic skiing. How tall should these poles be, you may ask? Well, generally in the past everybody has said that Skate poles should be around your lips or nose, and classic poles should be right at your shoulder or uncomfortable under your armpit. Um, that's a great way to do it if you don't want to get all nitty gritty and measure. However, back in like 2014 and 2015, when double poling was taking over the classic scene on the World Cup, in an effort to save the classic technique, Fist thought it was a good idea to put out pole regulations. Not only did they put out a pole regulation for classic skiing, but they also put out a pole regulation for skate skiing. In the rule it reads, classic poles should be no longer than 83% of a skier's body height while they're wearing classic boots. The skate rule reads that an athlete's poles should not exceed 100% of their body height in boots. That's kind of a ridiculous rule. I think they just added it in there because they had a rule for skate skis. Uh, nobody skis with poles that are up to their forehead. That's just ridiculous. Um, it's inefficient and you won't be able to get on top of them to get good power. When you go to measure your pole, it's important that you measure to where the strap comes out. Every pole is different between the strap and the top of the pole on their lengths and you don't actually get any pole height out of that. Um, it's just how their housing works to hold the webbing that holds their strap. So the rule for classic skiing reads that you measure to right where the strap comes out. Um, this allows it to be the same across the boards no matter what pole you're using. Right now, the trend in classic skiing is to have your poles pretty much right to the 83%. It's a really good height. Um, it's really efficient for both double pole and striding. Um, Everybody kind of wants a longer pole to be more efficient in the double pole um, and getting it right up to that 83% height works really well. Uh, right now in skate skiing, the trends are kind of on the shorter end, more like having your poles right at your chin. Um, this allows you to move them faster, especially in sprinting and kind of get on top of them harder because you're not having to come up so much and let them take the time to fully come through. Let's talk pole baskets now. Start poles, along with a lot of other poles, come with three different basket sizes and then a roller ski ferrule. The different basket sizes are gonna be used in different conditions. Uh, the first size is gonna be the small basket. These ones come standard. Small baskets generally come standard on all the poles and then the larger baskets are kind of the extras that you can get to better your power in different conditions. The small baskets are great in really firm conditions on well-groomed trails. They work really well. Um, however, when it gets soft or slushy, they tend to punch through. Um, if it's been raining a lot or if it's been snowing a lot and the snow hasn't set yet, these smaller baskets, pretty much no matter the brand, are gonna punch through the snow. And when you punch through the snow, you're gonna lose a lot of power. Um, so in order to mitigate that, you would then move up to the second basket, which is gonna be the medium sized basket. These baskets are great for broken down classic tracks when everybody's been pulling in the same place, for a little bit softer snow, maybe you're snow skiing on snowmobile groom trails more, maybe it just snowed a bunch and it's just softer because it hasn't set up and they've only groomed it once with the piston bully. These baskets are great. I prefer these medium sized baskets pretty much all the time unless it's really firm on my classic poles because I feel people pull in the same place way more. Um, I feel I can get better power out of them also. However, that's just a personal preference and everybody's different. If you find that the medium sized basket is punching through the snow, then you might want to look into upgrading to the big basket. These big baskets are great for when it's really soft or really slushy. Um, they're super wide, they have a lot of surface area that contacts the snow and doesn't let it punch through like a smaller basket would. The one downside to these really big baskets 
is they are a tad heavier, not much, it's almost negligible, and they do decrease the swing weight of the pole a little bit. Being able to get more power onto the ground to move faster is definitely worth that tiny bit of extra weight and the little bit lack of swing weight. Um, you're gonna be way more efficient being able to put power in the ground than being able to get your pulls forward faster. When all the snow melts and we're back into summer training, we're gonna switch over to our good old roller ski ferrule. Now, the small baskets on the start poles that come with it, the orange ones, they do work okay for roller skiing. However, they're not as strong, so the metal tip is gonna break way sooner and when it's really hot out, this orange piece will actually bend if you're putting a lot of power onto them. Um, I highly recommend switching over to the much burlier roller ski ferrule so that that way, when the snow falls again, you still have your winter baskets. The roller ski ferrule is way stronger, the metal on the tip is stronger, and it goes further into the plastic. This allows it just to be beefier, and handle more pressure going into it over more time. When you're going to switch your baskets, it's pretty simple. The start poles have a glue on basket system that all you need to do is heat up the basket a little bit to melt the glue, pull the basket off, put a little more glue on, and then put the new basket on. Really simple. To heat it up, um, there's a few different ways. The best way is probably just to use a good old heat gun or boiling water. Um, either work. If you don't have access to a heat gun, boiling water is pretty much available in any house. Just boil some water, stick your tip in it for a little bit, pull it off, and push it back on. Um, if you're taking off the handle, a heat gun or boiling water works really well too. However, sometimes the heat gun will get too hot and burn the cork. This is where the boiling water may come in a little more handy and be a little more gentle on your pole handle. Nowadays, many people have higher end, full carbon fiber poles. These poles are great because they're super stiff and they're super light. However, they do damage very easily and they're prone to breaking. One way to mitigate this is to have a pole tube. Basically, keeping them in your pole tube is just keeping good care of your poles. You're gonna mitigate them from getting hit from the side, getting tossed around and scratched and dinged up and then prone to breakage. A pole tube, such as this one, is gonna help your poles last a lot longer. Um, this is a big pole tube, it fits a lot of poles. They are great. Um, they don't let your poles get hit from the side when you're traveling or just when they're in storage. They keep them nice and safe and they make them last a lot longer because they don't break down as fast when they're in the pole tube. Um, these pole tubes are really good. They are large. Um, another great thing you can do is just go buy at Home Depot, any hardware store. They should have this, uh, it's like four inch irrigation tubing, I believe they call it. It has the holes in the side. It's really light. Um, you can get a cap for the bottom or just stuck tape works or both. Um, these are really good. They're super cheap and they're a great way to keep your poles from getting broken. These are also really good. The zipper top really secures them in there. Um, either will work, but I highly recommend having a pole tube. That's pretty much all you need to know about poles. If you need different size baskets, new straps or handles, a pole tube, or even new poles, you can get all that at enjoywinter.com. Having your gear dialed is just gonna make skiing more enjoyable. Nobody likes it when you blow out a strap and then you have to hold your pole really tight the rest of your ski. It's just no fun. Get it dialed, go have fun. See you out there.